Let's go back to the Pharmacon. Darren's essay that you're so fond of plagiarizing, you've read it? Dirk, there's more to my life than just children's books about ponies. My first book was a feminist critique of contemporary short films. Huh, I didn't know that. Maybe I'll read it sometime. Anyway, Derrida claims that one of the most important words in Plato's Phaedrus is a word that's not even in it. Right, the chain of signification begins with a reference to pharmacia and travels through other related words like pharmacon, but Plato never mentions pharmacos, the scapegoat, which is what his text is implicitly entirely about. Even if it manages to escape the notice of Plato himself, it nevertheless passes through certain discoverable points of presence that can be seen in the text. Yes, and you've copied Plato's exact chain, or copied Derrida's copy of Plato's chain, but with one difference, you did mention Pharmacos because your text is very explicitly about sacrifice, and you mentioned Pharmacia and Pharmacon, both as remedy and cure, and even its secondary meaning as paint. No, the word you left out, your invisible link, is Pharmacius, sorcerer. Ah, the powerful one, the one in control. Exactly. So the absence of Pharmacius reflects my uncertainty about who is really in control of my own book. Back to control again, see my point? What exactly are you saying I'm afraid of? Of not being in control? Of being in control? Or of the uncertainty? All three. I thought you'd say that. But here, in this book right now, you're afraid of taking control. Of being the invisible Pharmacius at the other end of the chain. You say you want to erase this book by throwing it into the river Meadie, but come on, you don't need to do that. You could erase it yourself. You, the author. You could burn it, or tear it up, or hell, you could just stop writing it. But you're choosing to act through Dirk the character and trying to convince me who is still you to symbolically destroy it, even though, ironically, I couldn't destroy it in this way without you creating more of it. You need to write me destroying it. I really do want to erase it. Everything I said earlier was true. I just... I guess that's not the only thing I want is all, or only part of me wants it. We both know you well enough to know that you can't just abandon it. It's not what you do. You always take your projects too far and make them so hard for yourself, but you complete them regardless. Or maybe you even complete them because they're so hard. You're a masochist who creates problems for yourself so you can be the one who solves them. You're not telling me anything I don't already know. So you need to finish it, and you could right now. John Bettencourt hurled the book into the river. That's all you need to write. That exact sentence again, without the quotation marks. So why don't you write it? It... This book's gotten out of hand. It's grown bigger than I intended. More complex. And I don't think that I can just end all of it so abruptly. Does that imply this book has some sort of life of its own, beyond what you gave it? Then playfully making your characters self-aware, you made them aware of play and somehow made them real? In a sense, at least. When you put it like that, it sounds really stupid, doesn't it? Yeah, kind of. But the problem is that I've wrapped up so much bullshit along with the rest of the book. Any parts of it that are worth saving are mixed up with all my insecurities and self-loathing. I can't take any of these parts back and out. Like I said, I don't want Jane to see that. Hell, I don't want to see that. So preserving this book would mean preserving all of that along with it. Would it be merciful to put it out of its misery? Destroy it so that it doesn't have to shoulder the onus of all the horse shit from my own brain that I pumped into it? Or is that my selfishness talking, disguising itself as self-abasement? Now we're getting to the other big issue at the heart of things, responsibility. Okay, yeah, I get it. We don't need to talk about that one in detail here. No, Dirk, I think that we do. You created something that, in your mind, is in some way alive, and in some way self-conscious, and you're human enough to realize that you can't kill it. I never said that. But if you don't destroy it, you need to take responsibility at some point. I'm not saying you are or should be responsible for it now, but take responsibility for creating it. And if you destroy it, you'll need to take responsibility for that. If you keep it alive, same deal. You need to think it over and decide for yourself what degree you're responsible for each of those acts. Why can't it be responsible for itself? Can it be? That's something you need to decide. Are you still talking about the book? Yes, if you're talking about something else, that's coming from your end, not mine. If you say so. 
Here's another way to consider responsibility in this book. Think about all the other texts that you've quoted or paraphrased or alluded to. What about them? You loved to pull them in, but you very rarely identified or attributed them. Well, it's hardly an illusion if you pinpoint the source in MLA format, is it? But it's not how you used them, it's how you eventually punished yourself for them. When Anna started channeling characters from the works to which you alluded, that was the one thing more than any other that led to your downfall, your self-inflicted loss or gain of narrative control. So I was shirking the responsibility of... of history? Literature? Trace? By being obtuse regarding citation, and then I forced myself to take responsibility, which made me lose control. Either that, or you were taking on unnecessary responsibility with your illusions, and it was only when you relinquished that responsibility that you were able to regain control. I imagine that if I ask you which one it is, you'll say both. Good imagination. Okay, so we've established that I feel some responsibility, deserved or not, for preserving this text, for letting it live. There's a part of me, at least, that can't stop writing it for reasons that go beyond obsession, but here's the problem, I've painted myself into a corner where preserving this book means facilitating a plan to destroy it. You mean Anna's plan? Yeah, the narrative is hurtling towards the moment of her plot's realization, its manifestation as plot as such. It has so much momentum at this point, and I don't think that I can change its course with anything short of a THE END. If I keep writing, it'll inevitably result in Anna wiping the slate clean. So wouldn't it be better that I do the wiping myself, on my own terms? But that's not what Anna's plan is about, it was never about wiping the slate clean. Weren't you paying attention to what you were writing? The terminology is important. It's not Operation Tabula or Rasa, it's Operation Palimpsest. What's the difference? Tell me, what does Tabula Rasa mean? Blank slate, idiomatically, literally scraped tablet. Literally. Just like a palimpsest. Not quite. The Romans would write on wax tablets, then melt the wax before scraping it so that the tablets could be used, leaving no trace of the original text. Heh. <laughs> a palimpsest is just the opposite, though. No melting. Even on the most thoroughly scraped palimpsest, both texts are readable. The erased text might be incredibly faint, sure, but it's still there. A palimpsest is nothing but trace. So it's either my worst or my best case scenario, depending on which part of me you ask. Does Anna know about this aspect of her own plan? If you don't know whether she does, I don't know either. Hmm. And this is where the third big concept comes to play. Can't wait to hear what it is. Before I tell you, Dirk, will you leave these insert pages and go back into the book with me? Are you ready to do that, Dirk? I guess so. I need to face the end eventually. Good, let's go. Trapped again. No more or less than before, really. I guess you're right. So what's this third big concept? We've got control, responsibility, and... choice. This book's about giving others, and even yourself, the freedom to make choices, and more importantly, trusting them in their own choices, and accepting that their choices might not be the ones that you want them to make. Fits nicely with the other two themes you identified, doesn't it? You're saying that I'm so controlling of others that I strip them of the ability to make their own choices, and I can avoid responsibility for any consequences because I claim that they made the choices that led to said consequences, not me. I'm still talking about the book, not about you. But if you are me, isn't talking about the book talking about yourself, which is myself? Are you even listening to yourself, to yourself, to you? Which is to say, to me which you yourself say to me as I say it to you. I'll never stop being abused by how quickly you retreat into your words when you feel threatened. I'm not saying you're wrong. So with the idea of the choice in mind, I have to ask, what now, Dirk? What do you mean? I mean, tell me what you want me to do with the book. I'm letting you make a choice. Whatever you decide, I'll do it. So do you want to erase the whole thing? But just clear the way to the page that Anna needs in order to scrape the palimpsest so that her group may make their choice. Shit, this is hard. Can I have more time to think about it? Nope, I'm holding the book above the river now. All the pages, or just the one? There's sort of a lot going in my head right now, Jean. Isn't there always? More than usual. This page is almost over. 
This is our last scene. You really want to waste it with self-aggrandizing introspection? It's what I'm best at. Choose. Right now. Take responsibility, and you decide what that means. Damn it. I can't think of an appropriate quote for this occasion. Whatever. You're right. Let's do it. I created Anna, and now I need to trust her. Jean, get that goddamn paper off the last page. Anna, good luck. Scrape this fucker. I hope I'll see you again, Dirk. Happy reading, Jean Bethencourt.